Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the uh, remarkable scenes over the last 24 hours in Parliament. What does it say? 24 hours is a long time in politics. So it has. We've gone from Boris Johnson being in a bit of trouble to surely now the beginning of the end. As a Labour motion to investigate whether or not Boris Johnson lied to Parliament passes without real serious opposition. And I'll be explaining what's happened, why Johnson couldn't stop it, and what the consequences are, because one of the consequences is pretty big. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, uh, <laughs> where to start? Yesterday, half a dozen opposition parties got together to put forward a motion to call for an investigation into whether Boris Johnson had deliberately lied to Parliament. Conservatives have a large majority, they can easily sink it, but that's still a win because the opposition parties can then tell voters next month that their local Tory MP blocked an investigation into Boris Johnson. But this isn't what happened. The motion has passed. The investigation will now go ahead. So the first thing would be to explain what the motion was, why it presented a serious danger to Boris Johnson. It's a form of contempt of Parliament motion. It calls for Boris Johnson to be referred to the Privileges Committee, which is comprised of MPs, a majority of whom are Conservative MPs, to investigate the possibility that he has deliberately misled the House. There's no question that he's misled the House. There's no question that what he said were lies, it's whether they were deliberate. But the motion has to be binding. Ordinarily, the government decides the main business of the House. Opposition MPs can bring motions for debate, sometimes emergency motions, but votes tend to be just a matter of record, not consequence. The government don't have to pay attention to them. Recall the censure motion that the SNP's Ian Blackford brought against Boris Johnson a while ago. The vote wasn't binding. So Johnson could just tell his MPs, you know what, you can just ignore it, and most of them did. So MPs needed to bring a motion where the vote would be binding, not just symbolic, binding, there'd be a consequence. In order to do that, they had to persuade the Speaker, who represents the House of Commons, that it was something that should be given priority. The Speaker agreed, and so the board was set. Now we get into the politics, because the Conservatives have a huge majority of pretty tame MPs, or at least they have been. Boris Johnson should have had no problem getting this voted down. Six months ago, he'd have just said, vote it down, and down it would have been voted. So why didn't he? Well, half a year ago, something happened. He got his MPs to vote to basically abolish the Standards Committee, which is it's basically the same committee, but for a different purpose. And it's largely the, well, it's the same MPs at any rate. It does have a few extra members on the Standards Committee. But... He got his MPs to basically abolish the Standards Committee to then make it up back into a form that he was happy with in order to prevent it suspending a Tory MP, Owen Paterson, for corruption. The public backlash was enormous. It was a real case of Boris Johnson trying to set himself up above the normal rules. Classic case of one rule for us, no rules for them. Now, despite British voters going along with an awful lot of rubbish, Apparently we don't like that sort of behaviour. It crosses a line. And the flack that Tory MPs personally got from their constituents for their part in the sordid affair cannot be overstated. The backlash was so huge that the government U-turned immediately. And it wasn't the first time that Tory MPs had been told to defend an unpopular policy and then been left high and dry when the government folded like a knackered deck chair. But on that occasion... They did warn Boris Johnson that they wouldn't be doing it again. This is the last time, they said. Six months later, here we are. Boris Johnson wanted his MPs to vote against an investigation into his lying. But how would that look to voters? If Johnson's innocent, what's the harm in having it be investigated? Well, it wouldn't be a real investigation. It'd be a political witch hunt, really, they would argue. But... A majority of the committee are Conservative MPs. That doesn't make sense. Uh, yes, but the committee chair is a Labour MP. Now, as it happens, the chair being a Labour MP is neither here nor there. The committee will come to a unanimous decision. But to head off that obvious nonsense, the chair, Chris Bryant, 
wrote a letter that recused him from the investigation. So if the motion passed, in order to prevent that excuse being used, he would take no part in the investigation at all, and such is going to be the case. Now, there would be an even higher proportion of the committee comprised of Tory MPs, and no Labour chair. Tricky. If Johnson is innocent, surely a committee of basically mostly Conservative MPs would report that. So what's the excuse for voting against the motion? It seems Tory MPs had flashbacks of the Owen Patterson scandal and decided they didn't want any part of this. Now, I'm not saying they would have voted for the motion, although several now have, but a lot clearly did not want to vote against it, so they would just abstain. Leave their fingerprints off the whole sorry affair. I saw reports of MPs making excuses to get out of Dodge and go and help with the local election campaign in their constituencies. Wouldn't work for all of them, of course, because there aren't local elections in all parts of the country, but it didn't seem to stop a lot of Tory MPs basically leaving London for their own constituencies anyway. So for various reasons, the number of Tory MPs wanting to abstain rose to dangerous levels. So then last night, the government tried another wheeze. They proposed an amendment to defer the whole thing until after the police had concluded their investigation and the Sue Gray report had been published. Now, when I read the amendment at first, I thought it looked a little bit weird because Labour's motion, their original motion, called for the main investigation to wait until after the police had finished anyway. So what does the amendment do different? Well, two things. First of all, it also requires the Grey report to be published. Now, her report is supposed to be published as soon as the police end their investigation. So it should happen at the same time, but the government can delay that. Second, the investigation would not automatically begin with this amendment when the Grey report is published. There'd have to be another vote. What, it, what their amendment did is to say, basically, don't commit to anything, kick it in the long grass, maybe we'll have a vote later on to see if there should be an investigation. In other words, the amendment was a way of letting Tory MPs vote the investigation away without making it look like they were doing that. And I thought it would work. To an ordinary member of the public, you can make it look like the investigation will still go ahead. You're not, you're not closing it down. You're just saying, let's decide later. You know, just wait until after the police have finished first. This isn't what would be happening because the original motion says that. But Tory MPs would claim this version of events and it's so convoluted most members of the public wouldn't necessarily know. But they haven't. After the Owen Patterson scandal, a lot of Tory MPs clearly decided that they have reached the limits of their patience with, the, with their voters and they're not going to go along with any more of this rubbish. What's happened here is Johnson has lost his authority. Boris Johnson is still Prime Minister and he may well remain Prime Minister for some time or he might be gone next week. When it comes, when he goes, it will happen quite quickly. But in the absence of an obvious successor, he is... You know, he is now potentially still going to be Prime Minister for a good long time, but he's a lame duck leader of the Conservative Party because he's got no authority. He can no longer rely on his MPs to get their hands dirty to save his ass. And the thing is, because scandals are never far away from Johnson, his ass will never not need saving. This is it now. Like I say, without an obvious successor, yeah, OK, his removal may not be quick, but it is surely now certain. Steve Baker a Tory backbencher whose influence cannot be understated. You know, hugely influential. He stood up in Parliament. He was one of several Tory MPs to do this, but, but he is particularly prominent. He stood up and said that Johnson had clearly broken the letter and the spirit of the law. He said that he tried to forgive Johnson, but Johnson was not displaying genuine contrition. He said that Johnson knew what the letter of the law meant and that he should now just go. There were hardly any Tory MPs in attendance, but the ones who were in attendance were pretty much all calling for the same thing. But the ones who had gone home and weren't there to listen to his words will still know what he said. It will be reported. You know, will that be a nod to others to say, time to send the letters in now, lads? Or is it just for public consumption? Steve Baker is, after all, in a seat that is going to be under heavy pressure from the Lib Dems at the next election. Could easily be lost. And in fact, he said he was going to vote for the motion. Now, I've not checked the, the, exactly what happened there, but whether the vote went ahead or not. And uh, unfortunately, I'm having to record this technically before it's gone ahead, but clearly when it is going to pass. So when the investigation does go ahead, 
once the police investigation is finally over, of course, and who knows when that is, what are the consequences? Because the first consequences that we're going to get, we, well, we actually did. Today, if you were watching it, we got to listen to an entire debate where MPs got to call him a liar and they didn't have to withdraw the comment either. The reason is the debate was specifically about whether or not Johnson lied to Parliament. So therefore it was permitted. It won't be in future debates. It's not like they've changed a the rule here, but it doesn't need to be in future debates. But on a more serious note, what danger does it pose to Johnson? It's not just that he might be found to have deliberately misled the House, because I don't know how likely that is really, if I'm honest. How likely? Because I'm not suggest because I'm not suggesting the Conservative MPs on the committee would corruptly exonerate Johnson, but such an outcome would reflect badly on their party. The gravity of a judgment like that would be enormous. It would reflect it would obviously be the committee would be basically saying to Boris Johnson, you need to resign. But also, it would reflect badly on the Conservative Party in general who've stuck by him. And if, if Tory MPs still refuse to oust him at that point, that is. You know, the subconscious pressure to have reasonable doubt that Johnson deliberately lies to Parliament would be huge. But there is still danger to Johnson of the investigation even going ahead no matter what it concludes. After all, most of the public know he's a liar. And they know he's lying about Partygate. As several opposition leaders have said, the public know the score now with Johnson. The greater danger is that the committee have the authority to conduct a full and proper investigation. That means having access to all the evidence. You know what that means? That means the photographs. Those photographs that Sue Gray has seen, but she's not going to publish. That the police have got, they're not going to publish. As things currently stand, unless someone leaks some of these photographs, we're not actually going to be seeing them until long after Johnson's left office and too late to do any real good, other than pretending to learn lessons from the past so we don't mistake, make the same mistakes in the future, but that never happened. But the Privileges, Privileges Committee will demand the photographed ev evidence. They will look at it. Yes, I don't expect them to publish them either, but what you'll have is you'll have MPs of different political parties who will have seen them. And after the investigation is done and dusted, if they need to, they'll be able to stand up in Parliament and talk about them. Sue Gray and the police may feel the need to keep them confidential for fear of creating a political shitstorm. Understandable. But a committee of MPs doesn't have to be so careful. That's the main danger for Johnson. That MPs can stand up and say, you know, these photographs we've heard about, yeah, they exist, I've seen them. That's why he put everything into blocking this investigation. And so great is this danger and so damaging will it be to the wider Conservative Party. Tory MPs may now just feel it's better to get rid of him now rather than delay the inevitable and suffer even more damage for doing so. I can understand it if some Tory MPs think to themselves, this may still all blow over. I think they're insane. But if they do and they think they can, you know, be still with him at the next election, OK, I can understand, you know, clenching your buttocks and just putting up with it. But if you think, as a Tory MP, he's got to go at some point now, and you also think to yourself, but the longer we leave it, the more damage we're going to do to ourselves that is permanent damage, why not get rid of him now? But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And until next time, I'll see you later.